uh, play of the game from way down. Plus two, silence. Get Raider getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Raider. Welcome back and thank you so much for hanging out through our break tonight. Uh, we have some more NGS action headed your way. This time moving on up Division C West now. We got Essence Gaming and Cosmos hanging out in our lobby right now ready to go. And as you know, I don't like wasting your time. Once again, I am joined by the ever so marvelous Green Mist. Hopefully you're still doing fantastic with me. I'm going to let our players and our captains know that I'm ready to go and hopefully you guys at home are ready as well this should be a good one entering tonight's matchup looking at the division C West standings currently see Essence Gaming and Cosmos tied with three points uh, one extra match has been played by Cosmos to this point in the season but sitting steady at rank number seven and eight these teams are gonna battle off and see who can take position in Division C West. Looks like they're just making sure the hats are ready to go. And it looks like we are agreeing that everything looks good. So without too much further delay, we should be about ready to... Oh, not ready? Not ready. Okay, they're not quite ready. We're going to continue holding here. So I'll continue to stall. If you're hanging out for the first time, make sure you hit that follow button. We're casting a lot of NGS this season. This is cast number 16 already, so if you're looking for a lot of matches, someone who you can reliably come to nightly for NGS action, this is the perfect channel for you to hit follow on. I also advise you hit that notifications bell because it can let you know every single time that I go live. And if you don't want to miss the action, you're going to need to know when it's starting, so go ahead and click that notification bell as well. If you're watching in the future, maybe you're over on YouTube after I post this VOD, don't leave the channel until you hit the subscribe button. I'm looking to get up to 100 subscribers over on YouTube. And we're getting very close there. So if you can, head on over and do that. Uh, but do me a big favor and I'd appreciate and love you forever. So why not be friends with me and let's do it together. Here we go. Sky. Game number one. It is Sky Temple. As chosen by Essence Gaming, let's quickly talk about the ban phase tonight. It was Cosmos winning the coin flip, opting to ban out Cursed Hollow and Braxis Holdout. Essence Gaming banned out Battlefield of Eternity and Dragonshire. And as you can see, this game number one, as chosen by Essence, it's going to be Sky Temple, a map that I don't get to cast too frequently, but every time it happens, I sure do get excited. Waiting on Silver Jackal uh, to make the first ban here. Acting uh, draft banner picker person for Cosmos. And they're going to run down this clock. And make this decision, maybe taking their time, thinking through the draft piece by piece, as so many NGS teams like to do. Five seconds will remain for this first ban. And it looks like they're going to use the whole clock before settling on a Phoenix. Okay, maybe the first ban I've seen on Phoenix all season. There's a Stukov ban. Haven't seen too many of him being banned out either. So perhaps some homework has been done. They've seen what these players have been wanting to pick up in drafts in previous weeks. Have an idea of what their opponents are wanting to play here in map number one. One ban remaining for each team. First now belonging to Cosmos. Going to run the clock down all the way again it appears. And this time they're going to decide to ban out nothing. Oh, that's a first. At least for this season. A no ban from Cosmos. So how will Ailish respond to that after seeing the Phoenix taken out? Already removing Stukov from play. And thinking about taking out the Zul here, but instead it's just going to be Falstead, perhaps his strongest map in the game. A lot of camps to bribe and a really good gust opportunity on the boss pit here in Sky Temple. So false side taken out, no global possible from the bird, but still a few other options left available, including the Dahaka, which we've seen only one time all season. Oh boy, would I love to see him come back sometime soon. It's going to be Leeming to start it off for Silver Jackal. And here's some quick picks, seeing the Zul available, and 
We're also going to pair in a Kael'thas. Two strong picks for Essence Gaming. Will Zul be able to double soak here on Sky Temple? It's a possibility. Uh, Kael'thas so strong with the mage damage. See if the flame strikes and those living bombs can be of service. But first, we're going to have to see two more picks from Cosmos before we head into our final fan phase. It's going to be Varian and likely Greymane. Is this Greymane? No, it's going to be the Brightwind. But they do pick up a taunt. And they're going to get a global with a Brightwing. Final ban now, Essence Gaming on the clock. Uh, not a lot of things to look to take out, except maybe the Greymane, maybe the Malthiel. Things that can help enable Lee Main get some kills. I'd love to see them take out one of those, but it'll be their decision to make, not mine. It's just going to end up being a Johanna ban. One ban left. It belongs to Cosmos, already having this Leeming Varian Brightwing. Uh, probably want to take away a tank. I wonder if it's going to be the Garrosh here. We're pairing nicely with Zul and Kael'thas. Three seconds left, and what's new? They're going to run down the clock all the way again and decide to ban out the Lunara. This is a ban I saw in game number two of our last set. Wasn't expecting it, but teams are, are scared of Lunara recently. You're going to take her out, and that's going to leave open the Grey Main. And for the tank position, Apocalypse is going to play Muradin. So two picks left for Cosmos before the final pick for Essence Gaming. Still needing probably a solo laner. I doubt it's going to be the Varian. I'm assuming that's a Taunt Varian. So what kind of solo lane do they want? Do they pick up a Dahaka, get a double global? There's Raynor. And the final pick's going to be Ragnaros. Ooh, I like that one. Raynor and Rag. One pick left needs to be a healer now. Already having Greymane and Muradin and the Kael'thas and the Zul. It's just going to be Anduin paired in. Should give Greymane a nice escape now with that leap of faith. And plenty of healing for the front line as they try to engage on top of Cosmos. Let's head on over to chat and see what you guys are thinking about this game. Number one, I'm going to ask you one simple question. Who will win game one? Will it be Essence Gaming? Got to type that, right? Or Cosmos. And just like that, the poll is open. Head on over to chat up at the top. Select the team you would like to win. Make sure you hit submit so your votes are calculated. Here they are right up here. You see them? They're beautiful. Uh, and I'm going to keep my eye on it. You guys have been participating tonight, but you haven't been right yet. Uh, last match, you guys picked, uh, what was their name? Bunker Fun Time. Almost forgot their name to win each of those games, and they didn't end up winning them. So I wouldn't I'm rooting for you here, chat, as we load on into game number one. If you wish to Let's introduce this team on the left hand side. We see Jerger playing the Zul Tins on Greymane, Ailish the Captain on Anduin, Apocalypse playing the Muradin, and Adrian on the Kael'thas. Ladies and gentlemen, they're known as Essence Gaming. And here on the right hand side in red, it's Silver Jackal on Leaving. Ciara's gonna play the Varian, E Day 15 on Raynor. Oddity playing the Brightwing, and in the top lane on the Ragnaros, it is Nay. Make some noise for Cosmos. Begin. Uh, get bot tower first. Sending that message out to all. Perhaps a bit of a, a miscommunication. Or perhaps just trying to trick the opposite team. Apocalypse being a little cheeky there. Level 1s are up on the screen. We do see Exter Exterminator. The selection for Raynor. That'll be E-Day 15 playing Jimmy. Lead off flame strike will connect onto Varian. Game number one is officially underway. It's gonna be Nay. And uh, will we see Nay whip and Nay Nay? I'm not sure. But Ragnaros is a fun hero, a lot of damage, and probably gonna end up being the lava wave picked up at level 10. But of course, we still have nine more levels until we get to that point. So who the heck knows? Maybe Sulfurous Smash makes sense. I mean, if you have a taunt Varian, it's going to give you an extra form of lockdown. So why not? 
both teams splitting off onto Siege Camp. So it'll be Grey Main for Essence Gaming. And on the opposite side, it's Rainer for Cosmos. E Day 15 with that Exterminator talent. So efficiently able to clear out these mercenaries. Uh, should be able to do you it all by himself. Detected. But here on the other side, Grey Main a little bit quicker. That's Tin playing the GM. As we have a follow coming through, this one from the original Night Shift. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for following as we get that much closer to 1,100 followers here on twitch.tv slash murderrg. I appreciate all of you for your support. Top lane, Zul pushing by himself as Ragnaros is trying to double soak these lanes. It's Greymane working on a bruiser cam by his lonesome. Going to get some help from Zul. And now, Gerger going to rotate in the pit. We have an engagement down on the bottom side. It's Apocalypse. Trying to lead Essence Gaming on New top of Cosmos. <laughs> Another follow coming through. This one from Duckman146. Appreciate it just as much as the last. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Enjoy your stay and enjoy this NGS match. Here comes Greymane back from getting that Bruiser Camp and immediately getting taunted by Barry. And the Leap of Faith going to come out maybe prematurely. As Muradin also having to keep his life by more tossing away. Apocalypse now coming back after using that well tap. Siege Giants in the lane, but finally cleared out by Essence Gaming. There's a root gonna land on the Varian Flame Strike as well. No follow up after that as Ciara is able to back on up towards the Bright Wing and to the well. First objective phase in 15 seconds as we see Zul and Ragnaros still trying to double soak, but. Rag needing some support from Rainer. You see E Day 15 up in this top lane currently. And Zul recognizes this back and a rotate back towards the mid lane. As the rest of his team appear to be just jamming in the bottom lane. They're not on any of the temples. Oh, is this a mistake? This might be a mistake. Brightwing gonna remain down here. Phase shift available. Gonna be ready to come into this fight at any moment. As you see CR is starting to step in. No tower nearby, so it was safe through that, but a lot of roots landing, and now all the damage from Zool. There's the phase shift in from Brightwing, but she's gonna fall. First blood of the game belongs to Essence Game. Top lane temple, let's check this out. Nay playing the Ragnaros, able to get this all by themselves. And only three shots remain before the bonus shots will be enough for Cosmos to pick up the remainder of those. There they go. Okay, I wasn't sure. I was like, wait, what? Varian Sting split in the bottom lane will give level seven talents now to each of our teams. It does look like it will be Calamity for Leeming. Uh, and here is Unstable Compound for Rainer. Gonna help apply some slows. Wait, that, that's not the talent anymore. Excuse me. Each enemy hero hit by give him some pepper grants Rainer 10 mana and reduces the cooldown of penetrating round and inspired by one second. Oh! Unstable compound. Bottom lane siege happening. Kael'thas is here. Along with the Anduin and Muradin, they're going to start working on this bottom side tower. Will it fall? I don't think it will, but Muradin's going to stay in as long as he can. There's the taunt. Not taking some shots from that tower. Has to start backing up. Tower will stand as now we have Siege Giants coming from both sides. But a bit more aggression currently from Cosmos. They're using Leeming to their full advantage. Able to apply those magic missiles onto these enemy Siege Giants. And already they're down on the side of Essence Gaming. And another nice taunt coming out from Ciaris. That time able to pick up their first kill of the game onto Greymane. Well done by Cosmos. Still looking for more here with the Siege Giants still alive. There's E-Day now getting channeled by the tower. Does he recognize it? I don't think so. Ended up taking... Uh, four different shots and sent down to negative 20 armor now has to be careful from these flame strikes of Kael'thas trying to poke them away Siege Giants just now falling as the double so continuing from Zul remaining ahead let's take a look at the XP totals 7300 for Zul and just 5400 on the opposite side for Ragnaros so hero selection coming into play here in game one as Zul able to do what Ragnaros is not quite able to right now 
Single temple, bottom lane only, and 15 seconds until it's active. Zul remaining split out as Rayman gonna take another call to the face, barely avoiding that orb this time as he's able to leap in on the barrier. Living Bomb's gonna spread to multiple targets. Now setting their focus on the Silver Jackal, Leeming able to blink away, still surviving for now. It's Murden who ends up going down. No follow-up damage available for Leeming as the rest of Essence Gaming was able to back on out. Here's the phase shift from Brightwing to keep Leeming at maximum health. No one yet on the temple, but looks like Ciaris is going to walk on in. There's a root landing on the Leeming Salvation just to keep everyone alive. Well done. Another taunt coming out. Polymorph to pull in that time from uh, Anduin. Almost called him Barrier. This is Father vs. Son here in the bottom lane as Ciaris is going to continue to try to chase down Greyman. But so far to no avail. We do finally get to see our level 10 pickup for Ragnaros. It is the Sulfurous Smash, so not worried about the wave clear that Zul's been able to provide. Ragnaros is saying, Sulfurous Smash, I want kills. And that'll be a pause from Cosmos. So I'm going to take a quick flip on over to the webcams and say hello to you guys once again. Shout out and chat for all of you guys who are still hanging out. 15 viewers currently. If you have any friends out there that haven't shown up yet, go tell them. Stop in. Murda's casting right now. He's got a double header. Poor guy's trying to push towards Twitch partner. Needs all the support he can get. Uh, and you guys have been tremendous over the past few weeks here in NGS Season 9. Just starting up and I believe this is cast number 16 already for me. Uh, so as I said earlier, if you're not already following, you definitely want to make sure you hit that follow button now before you forget. You're going to want to be back here later this week, uh, including tomorrow. You're going to want to be back next week. You're going to want to be here the entire season. So that follow button, it's going to come in handy for you, and I definitely urge you to make sure you slap it. In fact, you need to smash it. Smash that follow button for me. Uh, looks like some technical issues uh, on the Ragnaros. Going to wait until everything's good to go. Maybe it's a mouse, a keyboard, a headset, an internet connection, uh, a monitor, pixel... I don't know. Maybe you guys know. But we have a very even game. Almost deadlocked on XP. It's 2-2 two to two in the kill counts. But structurally speaking, in the lead right now is Cosmos. But position on this shrine currently set up by Essence Gaming. Trying to get some shots out onto this bottom side uh, fort. But will they be able to hold it? I mean, it's full strength on both sides. We don't yet know the heroic selection from Brightwing at level 11. I would have expected to see the blink heal. Maybe the more aggressive of the two, in my opinion. Able to blink in, find some good polymorph kills. Uh, but might just be the Emerald Wind. A bit of a disengage can help out on the boss later on if they want to go for a boss play. Not quite sure what the issue is still, uh, but we're going to be patient. We're going to hang out. Hopefully, uh, Nay will be back shortly and we continue this game number one. Uh, we can talk about tomorrow night. I have another cast coming up. I can give you a quick preview. Where is that page? Here we go. Tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. We actually have a double header, 8.30 and 10.30, but the first one is Zombie Step versus Prime Apes. And then at 10.30, we're going to be moving to Division D West for Choo Choo Boys and Team Rainbow Strike Go. This is a rematch uh, that I was able to cast last week. They're in one of those double round robin divisions, so deciding to play the second half of the uh, Home and Away series right away, not wanting to waste any time. So that should be another great double header tomorrow night. Zombie Step and Prime Apes and then Choo Choo Boys and Team Rainbow Strike Go. And hopefully you guys have heard of those teams. Maybe you have some fans on one of them. Would love your support tomorrow night as well, just as you're here for me tonight. Here for these teams tonight too, of course. Essence Gaming and Cosmos. Still in this pause break. Uh, and I've run out of things to say. What else is interesting here? Uh, skeletal Mages for Zul. Okay. Thought maybe it might have been the Poison Nova. Skeletal Mage is pretty good, though. I like it. Um, what else? Nothing really. I mean, the Sulfurous Smash, I think that was the big question mark for me heading in. 
Uh, and after seeing the Zul able to soak more efficiently, I, I assumed it had to have been the lock-in pick for Ragnaros, but Sulfurous Smash may be a little bit better with the taunt from Varian. Help out the Lee Ming getting that reset. Can I reach out? No. Okay. Here, I'll flash the game your way again so you can see. Still just hanging out here. Nothing's changed. And technical issues appear to be the problem. Oh, right as I switch away, they're ready to go. Okay. There's the ready from Oddity. Just waiting to hear back from Essence Gaming now, and we should be back underway here. So just game number one, and we're deadlocked. Level 11, level 11, two kills apiece. It looks like everyone's ready to go. Uh, as uh, I can't talk. But, yep, I'm ready. We can't see his chat. Okay, good. Someone recognized that fact. Okay, going in three. Three, two, one. And we're back in. Bottom side temple currently in control of Essence Gaming. Firing some shots out at the bottom side fort of Cosmos. Here comes the engage. CR is trying to walk into the bush, but does find a murder in his face. Now the taunt comes out. Avatar has to be topped and Phoenix in response. Ragnaros very low, and now those skeletal mages coming from Zul, but here's the face shift. Gonna keep Varian alive. Back up to 75% health as Murden walks back in as the Jump right back out. Apoxus is in trouble. And it's ultimately Ragnaros who's the one to fall. First kill of the fight belongs to Essence Gaming. And they should be able to finish off this temple. Will they? Yes, they will. But it could be a little bit of trouble here now. As Ailish is going to be polymorphed. Apocalypse having to leap away. Silver Jackal, 26 health. And Tin wants the kill. Gets it. Will Tin end up going down? No leap of faith out of nowhere. Ailish with the huge huge save on tin highlight real play for sure but they did lose those bonus shots i thought they were secured but ultimately went over to cosmos at the end of the day apocalypse looking to play aggressive on the enemy siege camp here comes zul down from the top lane as well kale thas trying to approach as the root lands onto brightwing pops the emerald wind there's salvation to get a little bit of healing an 80 second cooldown used by anduin will that cost them we will have to find out so i would assume right now essence gaming not really looking to fight without their defensive cooldown gonna grab a siege camp on their side maybe make the rotation up to the bruiser camp there goes gray main and zul already up in that top lane pushing another minion wave in as ragnaros trying to play catch up it is a quarter level lever a uh, quarter level lead Right now for Essence Gaming, pretty much contributed just to this rule. Look at this, 12,000 on the opposite side, 11,000. That's the difference right now. Bottom lane, stun on the Varian. There's the flame strike, but the shield wall going to keep Ciaris up. Let's take a look at these level 13 talents. Still waiting to see what Ragnaros is willing to pick. Uh, going for this Sulfurous Hunger's build and completing it early. The night of the sun I forget what the pick here is at 13, but it should be useful for Red. And our third temple will be active 13 seconds from now. Ailish taking a look to see who's down on the bottom side, but no one currently in there for Cosmos. Apocalypse just gonna hold this bush. We will be scouted out by Silver Jackal throwing out some magic missiles with Leeming. And now with them active, it looks like we might have a fight up top between Zul and Ragnaros. First strike's coming out, but there's a Sulfurous Smash. Gerger in trouble. Starting to back up, throws down the Skeletal Mages. And Nay will disengage the fight, not going to chase it any further on Zul. Here's a fight down bottom now as Hyperion cast by Raynor. Face shift coming in to keep E-Day 15 alive. 
And everyone gonna be able to disengage from that fight. No kills happening for either side as Aelish moves on the point, throws out the chastise, does land on the Varian. So much damage on Murden, has to get saved by Salvation. Which was back online when they needed it for Cosmos. Now standing on this point, Varian wants to re-engage, waiting for the team to walk on in with him. Gonna take a gravity lap to the face of now Apocalypse on the front side. Has his warp toss out again. Big curse bullet lands on the Varian. Gonna fall. Silver Jackal low. But throws out the Disintegrate and takes out the Greymane. Looking for a double kill. Can't find it yet. Oh, barely getting a heal as Apocalypse. And Silver Jackal was licking their lips looking for that one. Not quite able to finish off Murden. Now getting a lot of support from Anduin. Ready to re-engage as Brightwing trying to slowly heal up the other side. Chastise connecting onto Raynor. Not enough follow-up yet. There's the Phoenix being thrown down. Raynor in trouble trying to run through. Should be a Storm Bolt. There's the flame strike, and now Brightwing very low will end up falling. Staggered death for Cosmos means Essence Gaming should be able to take a lead. Another temple uh, still ready to fire. It's got about a third of its shots left. Ragnaros going to walk on the point, but here comes Murden willing to fight Nay, who's going to back on off, not willing to stand through and stagger out another death. It's level 16 secured for Essence Gaming, should be able to finish up this temple. And still 10 seconds until Brightwing's back. Is there anything else they're gonna be able to do? I don't think so. And so the light Here's the Siege Camp, and this is Muradin walking in, right on the point, gets a lead off Stormbolt on the Varian, follow up Skeletal Prison, and Varian locked in, can't go anywhere, Salvation, Saving them through a lot of damage from the Hyperion and now immediately walking onto the boss. This is completely scouted though. That Hyperion walk in with them. But will they be able to take a fight 5v4 here in the boss pit? I don't think they're going to be willing to do it. They're just not. Raynor going to walk in. There's the Avatar from Raynor. Boss secured. Now the Skeletal Prison coming out on the E-Day with the Mages dropped as well. Leaping in's Apocalypse, finds a Stormbolt onto Ragnaros. There's a the Cursed Bullet, nay very low, but Sulfurous Smash gonna keep Ragnaros alive. A nice self-save at 40 plus health. Really should have died there, but what an effort with that heroic talent. Bottom lane, boss is approaching the keep wall. It's gonna get a little bit damage out onto these towers, but I don't think it's gonna finish either of them off, will it? Ooh, yes it will. Big boy, big punches. Siege camp was secured, and here goes Greymane once again. This time along with Kael'thas onto the Bruiser camp. They're gonna try to push this one out early. Uh, I wonder if they wanna save it until the next temple. Oh, temple perfectly timed. It doesn't even matter. 30 seconds until we're ready to go down there, and it will be a Bruiser camp pushing the top lane that someone's gonna have to respond to from Cosmos. Their Bruiser Camp is also available, so they could just pick that up to help stall it. And it looks like that's going to be the, the decision for Ciaris and Nay. Here comes Silver Jackal and Oddity as well. Bottom lane Temple active in just one second, and Greymane immediately on the point. Going to start up the channel for Essence Gaming. This is targeting onto the bottom lane keep wall, which already took some damage from that boss earlier. This is why that bottom lane is the most important one to get when these temples start showing up down here. We've already gotten a boss. It usually means doing significant damage onto keeps. So Wells down and now these shots starting to focus onto that keep. We're going to see if anyone wants to engage in here, but it doesn't appear to be the case. They just clear out the bruiser camp up top. And now we're slowly starting to walk towards the mid lane. And this temple is already done. Four shots left. All of them going over to Essence Gaming, and that should be the first keep of the game. Let's see. Oh, the last shot is enough to take it down. Well done by Essence. Catapults will be spawning every wave now for them in the bottom lane. And they've got to be feeling good having this duel able to double soak throughout. Giving them a nice lead. And still at work. Here goes Jerger back up to the top lane to help clear out the Bruiser camp. The rest of the team, well, they're just trying to avoid this bush party, apparently.
Bruiser Camp has been cleared and Essence starting to make the rotation back towards mid. Need to be careful. Still without their level 20s and just a moment away. It's a one level lead. So really no need to fight until you have your talents. But instead it looks like they might be looking for it anyway. No, they're being pinged to disengage. They're backing out. I think realizing they're so close to 20. Just going to save it for as long as they can here. But here comes Barry and looking for the big taunt. Oh my god, the pull. The leap of faith coming out from Anduin again. This time saving Murden from sure disaster. That Sulfura smash was coming down. And it was ready to connect. Still no level 20s. But now they're going to have access to uh, a lot of extra strength. Especially on this gray main. It's going to be tooth and claw. I'm surprised actually. I thought that was going to be the hunter's blunderbuss. Uh, but instead looking for that Morgan form damage. A little bit of extra cleave. And a siege camp pick up double temple phase about to be active. Still no level 20s for Cosmos. Going to have to be careful here as Murden starting to move towards the vision. Wants to maintain control of this bottom side temple. First bullet does land. They find Ragnaros and Nay is all caught out by themselves. A big pickup with level 20 talents for Essence Gaming. Murden going to stand on this mid temple. And it looks like the rest of the team about to head on up to the top. And what can Cosmos do from here? They have to clear out a siege camp in the bottom lane. But they have two keeps under pressure now with shots coming in. These towers are down. This is going to start focusing on this well. And then immediately is going to change focus onto this keep. Here in the top lane, one turret just fell. Now working on the wall. Oh boy, this is bad. See what Cosmos can do. Still 23 seconds till Ragnaros is back up. There's a storm bolt landing on the Varian. Follow up chastise as the blink. Uh, excuse me, the phase shift coming in from Brightway, keeping Varian up, but didn't necessarily need a full heal there. There's a salvation from uh, Anduin. And it keeps some heroes alive, including Zul. Jurger now starting to back up as the Hyperion doing a lot of damage. It's a big charge in from Varian during the Dwarf Toss. Put him in a bad spot, ended up falling, but the resets for Leeming and up the net, a double kill, but oh! She blinks out of it, almost fell to that uh, second uh, cycle of the Flame Strike. Whew. Mid keep on negative health, it's about to fall. Top keep, oh, it's pretty low too, baby. Mrs. Windup Bird saying, Can Murda RG donate me some points? Angus Lee needs a shout out. Uh, you know, hang out and watch. It's the beauty of hanging out. They're free. The points are free. It's kind of like whose line is it? Whose line is it anyway? Where it's like the points don't really matter, but they're fun to count anyway. Boss has been started up, but it is a hero advantage on the map currently for Cosmos, and they know it. They're going to take advantage of it while they can. No Murden, no Zul. The boss is getting low, though. Tin and Aelish, they know it's there. They're going to charge on in. Greyman looking for the kill onto Ragnaros. And that Phoenix will pick it up. There's the Salvation. Now moving on the point is Leeming. e 15 in a horrible spot. Rainer falls as well. And even though they were down heroes, they end up picking up a double kill. Looking to chase on Silver. Jackal, he now gets taunted. Leap of Faith keeping Tin up with 200 health. Ooh. Is Ailish on fire with this Anduin or what? Boss picked up though and starting to pressure in the bottom lane. Top lane Bruiser Camp working on the keep. And it's going to be Barry and the one to try to clear it out. I don't think he's got it. No, he doesn't. Mid lane keep. It's down. And that'll be all three with a boss on the core. Ragnaros has already left the building. As Essence Gaming are looking to close out game number one here on Sky Temple. Their map selection. And oh boy, did it pay off for them. Game number one secured. Essence Gaming moves up 1-0. Shwee. <laughs> Everything Murda RG says is made up and the Murdalians don't matter. <laughs> Let's take a look at this match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series. What a game that was. Uh, strong finish for Essence Gaming. Able to move through the late game and a key double kill picked up in the throw pit where Cosmos threw it away. Had opportunity to get a boss but didn't end up securing it. They lose the two heroes and ultimately was enough 
for Essence to push on in and close out game number one. Here's our talent screen before we move on to a break. I got to continue to say thank you for all of you guys out there showing up to support. Uh, it's been a good double header so far. Uh, Nexus Cats took the earlier set. And now with Essence Gaming up one nothing, they're trying to close it out in game number two. We're going to have a very short break, about two minutes. And we'll be back in lobby ready to go for map number two. I'll see you guys in just a minute. Welcome back as I sip some water using my water break to its prime peak performance perfection. It's a nice alliteration for you. Uh, we have a game number one handed over to Essence Gaming now just one map away from walking away with a domination tonight. We are going to be in a slight pause here as Nay was having some issues during that uh, second half of the game lagging out a bit going to try to restart some stuff and see if that clears up the internet lag. And uh, we should be underway after they return. Uh, quick shout out to Shui in chat. Having a good time. Always supporting me. One of my favorite people. Just played a Storm League match in the meantime between games 1 and 2 tonight. Uh, and we lost. Shui, I have to apologize. Zagara was not the pick. I thought it would be. But I died twice to Murky. <laughs> died twice to Murky. I'm sorry. That's my fault. You were right. She's not good. I thought she was. She's not. I think it maybe works better in the four man, but no, probably not. It's still not good. Might not play Zagara for the rest of the season after that one. Still waiting on Nay to rejoin. We have all the other nine players here, so just to keep you guys updated, it will be a slight delay for now. Uh, and Shui saying, bro fist, I'll bro fist right back. We're in this together. What else can we talk about? Uh, hopefully you guys had a good day as I'm seeking employment. Applied for a bunch of new stuff. Uh, one of them was an esports position. That'd be interesting. I said, you know, why not? I'm looking for a job. I might as well inquire. Uh, so that'd be cool. Not for Heroes of the Storm, though, which would be kind of weird. If there were esports jobs for Heroes of the Storm, you better believe I'd apply for it. You know, we do so much work with NGS and uh, being the volunteer organization as it is, 
can't exactly make a full time New living with it. Detected. Uh, I do have a follow coming in. This one from Jerger. Thank you for that follow. <coughs> Whew, excuse me. <coughs> Double sneeze. If you know me, if there's one, there's always two. We got them both out quick. Uh, <laughs> asking if we're on central server, yes. And then someone says Asia. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for all these follows, all the subs that have been coming in as well. And this raid, oh, oh, 44 people hopping over from Mongoose's channel. Let's go, baby. Uh, should be asking what esport it, it's uh, part League of Legends. Uh, is what I played for. Mobilytics. They are a uh, an analytics firm working in League of Legends. They have some stuff for Legends of Runeterra and Teamfight Tactics as well, which is really the interest I have is I've been playing so much TFT. I've actually used their product. I like it. Um, it's helpful when you're learning, helpful when you want to know some some deep dive data. Another alliteration for you there. Um, so yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know if they're necessarily looking for someone with my skill set or not. So that's what I'm trying to find out. I did plug Nexus Gaming Series though. I was like, yeah, I do this. You know, I play esports. I do the esports type stuff. Looks like Nay has finally rejoined us here in our lobby. I'm gonna let them know I'm ready to go. And hopefully we can quickly load on into this game number two draft. It will be Tomb of the Spider Queen. Chosen by Essence Gaming, Cosmos wanting that first pick here in game number two, just as they did in game number one. Maybe regretting wasting a ban. Maybe. Whenever you see a ban not go through and then you end up losing the map, you can only blame yourself. Maybe could have banned out Azul. Maybe could have banned out a Johanna. Two strong heroes that were able to be picked very early by Essence Gaming. In my opinion, it might have been a mistake not banning one of them out. Um, da, 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 da. They're chatting about having a drink and having a good time. Blue, 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 blah, blah, blue. We'll take 15, 16 road beers. <laughs> You'll love to see it. Uh, we got Adrianra. Posas in chat, hanging out, rooting for Essence Gaming. Thanks for being here. Adrian Raposas, that's your name. Adrian. Okay. Welcome, Adrian. Are we ready? Is everyone here? Ready? Still waiting to hear back. Uh, one sec, he's checking if he can get his headset to work really quick. Uh, you better not tell me to play Murky. Did it? Hello? Remake? They started it? Okay, looks like we have to remake. Uh, what happened there? So the game started to launch, but I never went to the draft. Just kept me in the lobby. And there we go. We do have a new lobby forming. Sorry, blame Murda. No. No. All right. Second lobby now. Here I am back in this new lobby. Hopefully this one works. We did get a hero request. And another raid! This one from El Taquito! 13 viewers are going to join us here for game number two between Essence Gaming and Cosmos. We're trying to get underway. We're hanging out here in the lobby. Just had a bit of a uh, mishap. <laughs> uh, hero request from Orion to play Greymane. I'll try to play that hero next time I play. Uh, unless we see someone pick it here. If you're requesting it from one of these teams and they pick it, we're going we're gonna to mark that off as complete. Okay. Thank you for the raids, Mongoose and El Taquito. You guys are fantastic. Uh, two regen casters. Taco just joining the team, joining up with the regen squad of casters, doing a great job already this season. 
I think he's either more, like one more cast than me or I'm one more cast than him. We're like neck and neck for like who's going to cast the most matches this season. And I'll be damned if you beat me, Taco. Let the old man win for once, will you? Please. Just kidding. Keep up the good work, man. Really appreciate you. Uh, I think this time we're going to be ready. Hopefully. Sorry for the delays tonight. It's been a lot of delays. Uh, 1710 in chat saying, Taco, I need some cheese sauce. And Taco saying, I got that savory sauce, though. <laughs> what? Stop. Is everyone here? Are we situated, players? Are we ready? Everyone's ready. Okay, we're getting readies now. Taco coming in hot, top of the chart. Stoic here as well. Thanks for joining. I can only assume you guys had another duo cast tonight. You guys have been fantastic. I've tuned in uh, to at least three or four of them already. And each time, mwah, perfection. I love it. Game number two, Tomb of the Spider Queen, chosen by Essence Gaming. Mongu says, shout out to Kyle Ferguson for the raid to me that I got to pass along. Ooh. Way to go, Kyle Ferguson. Appreciate that uh, raid onto an NGS stream. And if you guys are still hanging from then, welcome to twitch.tv slash murdarg. I do a lot of casting here for NGS, so if you're looking to follow this amateur league, hit the follow button while you can. Uh, while supplies last, I can't promise how many follows are available tonight, so get yours while you can. Hit that button now and make sure you hit the notifications bell as well. You want to be alerted every time I go live with NGS action. As we see Phoenix banned out for the second time tonight by Cosmos. This is exactly what they did in game number one. And I wasn't quite sure why. I still don't know. Stukov also going to be banned out for the second time. That was the first pick uh, of ban for Essence Gaming in game number one. But hopefully this time we see a ban with this second ban for Cosmos. Because game number one... They forgot to hit the buttons and didn't end up banning out Zul or Johanna, which were, uh, excuse me, not the Johanna, but Johanna was New left off. There are a lot of strong heroes with that second pick, uh, because that second ban wasn't picked, I should say. But this time they take out the Anduin, and I just got to say thank you. And also a thank you in chat, we just did get a follow after I urged you to hit that button. Thank you, Mr. Soup. Appreciate you being here as we inch ever so close to our follower goal. We're trying to hit 1,100, and I think we're only a few away. Just about 10 more follows, and we'll be there. Ban will hit onto Anna the first time we've seen her name mentioned in this match. And this will be the first pick now for Cosmos. Game one, they took the Leeming. She's still available here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, but not a very strong pick. Uh, doesn't bring enough wave clear, and you can really struggle with a Leeming. So instead, picking up the Grey Mane will be E-Day 15. Johanna still available. This is her number one map. I definitely think that they want her. There is the Brightwing for Ailish, and it's going to be Varian instead. So instead of taking the strong tank, they want to steal away... What was happening on the other side, a Brightwing and a Varian already seeing that Grey Mane and feeling it might be too much of a threat. They don't want to deal with it again in game number two. So they're going to leave the Johanna available for Cosmos. And they're going to try to seal away the burst combination with the Varian. There's ETC and Tassadar, so no Johanna yet to be pitched. As I catch up writing things down in my book, we look up and it is Essence Gaming on the clock. 10 seconds for their final ban. Might be thinking about taking out a support here. Already banned out Ana. Anduin was banned out by the other side and they have their Brightwing. It's going to be a ban on Zul. Maybe not a bad idea either. One ban left. I don't even know what you think about taking out here. Any sort of damage is a possibility. Maybe just take out the Kael'thas, which is played in game number one. 
as we have yet another raid, third in a row. This one from my main man, Weenus. Welcome everyone, thanks for stopping in. Now, uh, I gotta welcome you because it's Essence Gaming currently up 1-0 playing against Cosmos. There's the ban onto Leeming. We're about to head on into Tomb of the Spider Queen, which might play a bit differently than we saw on Sky Temple in game number one. And it was a close game number one. Rainers picked up for Adrian, another hero that was played by Cosmos in the first game. They're stealing the entire draft the way it appears. Will this be Ragnaros? No, we have a DC. What is going on with this draft? Uh, more issues continue and I have to apologize. Not quite sure what's going on. Looks like someone disconnected and there's 69 bits being thrown out by Weenus. Appreciate that, my man. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for being one of my favorite people in NGS. And now all three of you, Mongoose, Takedo, and Weenus, all coming through at the same time. A lot of viewers now here. What's our count at? Uh, I show 47 currently. But we can hit 50. We can get up to 50 soon. And I do have to mention again, I said it to everyone who was here, but all you new viewers coming from Weenus, if you're not already following the channel, please make sure you hit that follow button. We're at 1,090, trying to hit 1,100 tonight. So if there's 10 more of you out there that are waiting to hit the button, don't wait any longer. This is cast number 16 for me. Uh, and it's only going to get more from here. We're going to do probably like 100 this season. Maybe like 200. We'll set a new world record. That's not possible. But we're going to try anyway. Kelodorn used 25 bits to play GG. Oh. Does that work? Is that a thing? Okay. Uh, how do I do that? Sound alert. Sound alerts. Is this a button? Sound alerts. Less than a minute ago. Did the sound go off? GG! There, I made a noise for you. <laughs> I don't know what that does. I feel really bad. Kelador, I don't know if that button works or not. Maybe I have something set up. Uh, my bad? Thank you for the bits. GG? We still don't have our player back in the lobby, just to keep you updated. It was, uh, Jerger disconnecting. Eesh. It's been a long draft here, setting up the second game, I apologize. We're actually at 63 viewers. So, uh, Shui let me know that I was completely off. Sorry about that. 62, 63, same difference. It's floating around there. Sometimes those raids don't tabulate until a little bit later on. But for those of you who have hung out, thank you for allowing that to tick up even higher. Trying to get up to an average of 75 viewers per stream. Trying to get Twitch partner. So the longer you guys stay here, the more often you show up, the sooner and the faster all of us together here in the RG fam are going to reach this Twitch partner goal. It might take a year, it might take two, it might take three. But we're on the path to Twitch partner, and I promise you I'm going to put in a all my efforts to get there. Here's a sub, this one coming out from Kelladorn. Thank you so much for that. Apologies on the sound alert thing, uh, but I definitely appreciate you with the subscription. Welcome to the fam, and hopefully you enjoy the emotes. We got a brand new mega kill emote for you. So if you see a mega kill happen, and you're watching here on my channel, be sure to throw down that emote. I want to see the entire chat from top to bottom filled with them one day. Would make for a great Instagram picture. Just saying. And we're still waiting for our player to rejoin this lobby. I don't know where they're at. You probably don't know where they're at. Hopefully the team has an idea. But they haven't clued me in yet. And if I do find out any information, I will let you know. Uh, the original Night Shift saying, Is it just me or is NGS greater than HGC? That's a bold statement. Uh, I will say this. The community involved with NGS is absolutely fantastic. You guys support everyone top to bottom whether it's division e all the way up to heroic division you bring out the love you bring out the support and in my opinion for me personally 
NGS is the greatest thing that's ever happened to Heroes of the Storm, even more so than HGC was in its heyday. Uh, the amount of support that uh, the league provides to players, an avenue for them to have an outlet to play competitive esports, uh, come together as teams, fighting for a common goal, uh, and having a good time playing a video game they love. I mean, what better place to do that than here in NGS? A big shout out to all of the volunteers involved. A community-led and driven league with no outside sponsorships, no outside help. Uh, tremendous efforts, season in, season out from everyone involved. And this season's been nothing short of spectacular. All the casters getting involved. Week 1, 100% of the matches were casted. Week 2, we broke the record. Uh, I think it was like 58. We had 59 in week 2. Something like that. It was one more than week 1. But we didn't reach 100%, but it was a record for matches casted in a single week. So continuing to shine, continuing to support all these teams. These casters doing a tremendous job. Shout out to the few who already raided us here tonight. Uh, and I see Slexia in chat now. My co-host for the NGS Game of the Week. Mentioning, did HGC have a Game of the Week? I think not. El Taquito saying, hey, uh, Murda. There an issue getting the lobby made? Yes, there is an issue getting the lobby made. I have no idea what's going on, as now you guys are asking me to drink some water. Uh, moist weenus, holy smokes, five water drinks. Okay, how do I count these? Jerger just rejoined, just so you guys know. Uh, weenus, these are for you. This is a full one. A lot of water in there, 32 ounces of glory. I'll try to get through like 10 ounces or so. Two ounce per hydrate. I just spilled some on me. Rip. That's three. A new subscriber has Four. been acquired. As Adrian Raposas hits the subscribe button. Appreciate you for that. Thanks for joining the family, pushing us closer to that subscriber goal tonight. Uh, apparently can't start the game. Gonna have to make another new lobby. One more sip for Weenus and we should be good. This is water. Do I need to show you? Here, Dax, take a peek. Water with ice. You see it? Yep, confirmed. Shout out to Yeti. Not sponsored, but love their products. Um, leaving this lobby, waiting for the... Hopefully, Looks last like it's time for a shout out. Here. Another shout out from Mrs. Windup Bird, saving up those points and using them at will. Uh, let's get a huge shout out for Angus Lee. He is on his acquired. way to being TikTok famous for telling bad jokes and dancing to Britney Spears. Also, he would like to know where you got those styling shades. Holy Dex! Five gifted subs going out to Angus Lee, Studley Dudley, Drunk Dwarf, Wellington, and Wipeout. Welcome to the RG fam. Thank you, Dax, for all those gifted subs. I think you're a the, new subscriber the has weekly been leader. Did it reset? And we got a hype train going? Holy smokes, a level 3 hype train. What? Absolutely incredible. You guys are awesome. Uh, Kelador saying confirmed it's vodka. Nope, not vodka. I don't like that stuff. I don't drink that stuff. No, thank you. I actually did have some vodka yesterday. I made a Bloody Mary. A new subscriber uh, has so I do acquired. lie. A fib. But this is water. I promise you that. Uh, mega kill emotes being thrown down. You guys love it. The five gifted subs does count as a mega kill. You're absolutely right. Daxhole, you are mega killing it, baby. Keep it up. I really, really do appreciate the support. Currently without any sort of job getting laid off a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is my full-time job for now while I'm searching for other employment. So all the support you guys are giving me, uh, not only do I thank you, Miss Murda thanks you too. Uh, she's in the other room, hopefully sleeping by now. Uh, uh, and we're hanging out here playing hot, so you guys are awesome. Thank you, Dax, once again. Appreciate the support. Continue throwing down those globes, those let's goes, those mega kills. If you like regen, you can throw down the regen emotes too. They're asking if I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Sorry, ready, sorry. Uh, I think we're good to go now. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> this should be ready to go now. 
Game number two draft. We're going to have to repick a lot of heroes we already saw. Hopefully they remember them because I wrote them all down and I'm going to keep them honest. A Red new team subscriber has been acquired. Stop! Weenus with another two subs and I think that puts us at the goal. What? Kelodorn dropping! A new subscriber has been acquired. Stop! Dude, stop! What is going on? The whole world is gonna have a sub to my channel soon. A new subscriber has been acquired. <laughs> what? Did someone else just hit sub too? I think uh, Larson may have hit sub as a well. New subscriber you has did. Been you used the Twitch Prime Larson. Keladorn gifting out five. Ween is gifting out two. Oh, the hype train is rolling up to level four. Don't stop now, baby. We can maybe hit level five. A new subscriber has been acquired. I'm not talking about these picks because you guys already saw them. So far, they are coming in order. Tassadar ETC, we're pick two, three, so that's just fine. Uh, we only got A to see the Brightwing and Varian. Acquired. <laughs> uh, if you hate alerts, sorry. There's a lot of alerts flying in, and they're glorious. A new subscriber has been acquired. Thank you for the support. You guys are awesome. Case or Casey, welcome to the channel. What a night indeed. I couldn't agree more as we see Uther picked up. A new and subscriber Rainer. has been acquired. Uther and Rainer. Two picks left for Cosmos. This is where we left off. Don't yet know what they were thinking to do in these picks. But still need a support. Maybe something for the offlane. Rhaegar, and once again, Nay gonna play the Ragnaros. Final pick, Kel'Thu freaking Zod for 10. And now that we've seen all of our picks, it's time to head on over to chat and ask you guys at home who's gonna win this game number two. Where's the poll button? I gotta find it. Here it is. New poll. Who will win game two? Will it be Essence Gaming or Cosmos? And just like that, our poll is open. Head on over to chat up at the top. Hit the drop down arrow. Select the team you want to win. Hit submit and watch your votes pile in. They'll be right up there on the top of the screen. You can see our little uh, stat widget fly in every time I start up a poll. And I am going to keep these results within eye's reach and let you know what you're thinking. So far, 50-50 split as there's one vote apiece for Essence Gaming and Cosmos. Continue voting. Help support these teams who are putting on quite a show for you tonight. Game number two, it's going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen with Essence Gaming leading 1-0. Kelador and appreciate that statement. I love this game. Happy to support a fan who keeps the competition alive, especially when they were hit hard with our current economy. Thank you, my man. Definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here and dropping those subs. But let me quickly introduce these teams for us in game number two. On the left-hand side in blue, we see Jerger back from that disconnect, playing the Uther in the bottom lane. Here at mid, it's Tin on Kel'Thuzad, Ailish the captain on Brightwing, Apocalypse playing the Varian, and Adrian on the Rainer. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Essence Gaming. Here on the right hand side in red, it's Nay once again on Ragnar Ciara is going to play the ETC, Silver Jackal on the Tassadar, Oddity going to play the Rhaegar, and E Day 15 on the Greymane. Make some noise for Cosmos. Votes are starting to pile up for Essence Gaming as we do see the action start up here at mid. Lead off power slide from Tiara is going to knock a few around in the force wall coming out from Kassadar. Going to help lock in some damage onto Varian. Uh, try not to be confused here in this game too because Varian and Raynor both using the army man skins looking very similar and might cause some confusion for the other team as the first blood of the game is drawn by Cosmos. It's Brightwing headed back to base with the first death. So 
we go in the bottom lane, it'll be E-Day 15 starting up the siege camp as Ragnaros and Uther are going to battle it out over some minions here in the bottom lane. But you got to believe Ragnaros is going to get the better exchange here. Uther not necessarily known for wave clear. And with a siege camp about to be added into the damage, it will be picked up by E-Day 15. And now a uh, case for caution for Uther in the bottom lane. Going to need to call in some backup. As Ragnaros is going to rejoin after dropping off a few gems. We'll check out this mid lane fight happening. Rayman rotating up into the vent. Might have a target to leap on. It's going to be Varian. And Apocalypse is in trouble. But a great polymorph on ETC is going to help keep him alive. There's some bits. A cheer 69 from Miss Windup Bird. Thank you for those bits. Thanks for hanging out. And thank you for supporting Heroes of the Storm. Varian looking for the charge in, but realizes uh, not exactly a full hero yet. Still needs to get the level 4 talent selection, and we can assume it will be the top here. Kelthazal looking for damage, but ultimately it's Rainer falling. Now power slide on the Varian. 13 more gems will hit the ground as Cosmos collect their third kill of the game. Let's take a quick look at these level 4 talents. As I thank Keldorn in chat, dropping 69 bits once again. You guys just love the cheer 69. If you're not already supporting the fantastic show put on by Weenus and Slexia every Friday night, you better start doing it. Head on over to twitch.tv slash Slexia or twitch.tv slash Moist Weenus. I believe they alternate which channel they do it on, but every Friday night, it's a fun variety show. It's called Cheer 69. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, and I strongly encourage you guys to check it out as well. Was a Brewster can't pick up by E-Day 15. Now rejoining the team here at mid as the Force Wall. Upgraded to that electric fence at level 4 by Tassadar. Gonna help slow down any sort of push to clear out this Bruiser camp. Now five heroes show up from Cosmos. Potentially ready for a fight. It's gonna be Ken walking forward. Looking for the chain. Not connecting on Tassadar. And they won't be able to find a kill. Almost enough gems on hand now for Cosmos. They're going to get a bunch more in the bank. Now sitting at 41. Only need to pick up three more before they're ready for their first turn in. The big jump on the Jurger. And Kel'Thuzad's going to need to be careful here. Falling low. 17 gems on hand will fall. Gems can be picked up. But will they lose any more? Tastar throwing out so much damage. Here comes Greymane looking to finish off Varian. But not able to get that final killing blow. Four kills in the game, though, and a one-level lead for Cosmos. Looking much better than they did in game number one. Now just two gems away from getting their first turn in. Ragnaros with enough on hand might be headed down towards his bottom egg spawner. And there goes Nay starting up the channel with Adrian, none the wiser. This will be the first Web Weavers of the game. And they're going to be coming from the red side for Cosmos. Trying to push up this midway first, clearing out a few of those uh, spider butts, getting more gems for Ciaris. Now rotating towards the top, where this is the lane you want to focus on for the offensive team. Boss lane being more important than any other lane here. Here they come, minion wave already on the wall, as well as Greymane trying to hack away in Morgan for him. Now trying to swipe his way out. They turn their focus on the Kel'Thuzad. Excuse me, that's uh, Uther. Thought it was Kel'Thuzad. Tin's also pretty low, but. With this double support, you gotta believe they have a bit more sustainability in these fights, but we just have not seen it yet. It's been the kill potential so much, and now another good power slide after already picking up the kill on Brightwing. Thought maybe they had a chance to take out Varian as well, but they weren't able to do so. Instead, it's just the Webweaver continuing its web blast, and more damage now coming out onto the fort. Well done during the objective phase. Now Ragnaros at mid able to pick up the remainder of that fort. That's a success, and still keeping the lead, a good force while landing onto Tin, Tassadar coming through. How many gems is this, 16? Or is that a 10 plus two? It's a lot of gems. Essence Gaming find themselves very far behind, a two level lead for Cosmos. There's the heroic talent starting to be picked. It's the black hole from Tassadar, Mosh Pit from ETC. Down here in the bottom lane, Ragnaros getting to work on this siege camp. It'll be their second capture of the game. Where Grameen was able to grab it earlier. This time, Nay gonna be able to do that. 
and going with the Sulfurous Smash for the second game in a row, uh, I'm surprised. I thought game one maybe needing the Lava Wave didn't go for it, and here once again in game two, gonna rely on the skill shot from Ragnaros. Getting some poke damage from Kassadar onto this fort. Remember that boss is still available and they have level 10 talent advantage. Wouldn't be a bad idea to go for it, but they don't have their Ragnaros with them currently. Instead, gonna continue jamming in onto this fort, minion wave with them. Now, Rhaegar, excuse me, Greymane in the Worgen form to try to finish it off. Along with Rhaegar throwing out a lot of auto attacks as well. Don't want to discount him at all. And that will end up being the second fort of the game. Now, excuse me, third fort of the game, bottom fort fell. I didn't even notice. Oh, baby. Keladorn in chat throwing out the what face at the Sulfurous Smash. Yeah, I mean, we used to always see it in HGC, but nowadays, Lava Wave is hot. 50% already whittled down on this boss, and Essence Gaming have no idea. Instead, trying to work on their turn-in. I think they're going to be a little upset when they see this boss get spawned out, and there it goes. Rotation's now coming out from Cosmo. It's going to try to slow this down, but Uther, Jurger, down on the bottom side of X-Spawner, and able to get in enough gems for Essence Gaming to get their first Web Weavers of the match on the map, but they're gonna have to clear out a boss in the top lane. And that should give easy opportunity for Cosmos to clear out uh, mid and bottom. And then make the rotation up the top to finish that off as well. Ragnaros is wide open here. can even hop into the Molten Core if he wants to. But not gonna need it. This Web Weaver cannot stand with this Catapult firing at it. A lot of ranged minions as well. That'll be two of those web weavers down, just the one in the top lane still standing. They're gonna rotate as a team to deal with it. Smart moves here by Cosmos. But they're gonna be pretty deep on the opposite side of the map without their level 13 talents yet. They might be able to get it off this wave, but for the few seconds between then, definitely need to be thinking about a potential fight coming from the other side, but. Now with 13s, nothing to worry about. In fact, all they have to worry about is turning in gems as they have enough on hand, just needing 33 more to get their second set of web weavers. They're going to turn their focus onto their own bruiser camp first. Then I can expect they're going to make their move on to the egg spawners. Uh, yeah, Keladorn in chat, web weavers going to be cleared for free. They certainly were. And El Taquito saying a buddy of his and him run the Uther Rag combo. Well, too bad Uther and Rag aren't on the same team here. Uther's on the left, Rag's on the right. Here comes the turn and should be enough. And it is. Power slide in, Mosh Pit on to a quick kill on Uther, but he'll be able to heal from death. Polymorph connecting on the EPC as the black hole locks in three targets. Can they get any more kills as Brightwing trying to move around and getting chased down by Rhaegar? Here CR is trying to move in, interrupting the Molten Core cast from Ragnaros. Apocalypse still standing, 500 health trying to shield wall, ends up finally going down. Now Adrian's surrounded, he's down as well. 10, the last one still standing, avoiding the meatball and makes it out. Webweavers on the map with three heroes dead. Cosmos looking to bring us to a game number three, and they have their foot planted on the throats of Essence Gaming right now. Ready to push down at least one keep. Might even be two now with Uther locked in by that force wall, still in chase as Tastar. But the Divine Storm gonna save the day. An 80 second cooldown from Uther being spent to save his own life as heroes are respawning. Let's follow this action in the top lane. A lot of damage coming out onto the fort, but the web blast gonna miss from that web weaver. A sulfurous smash. I didn't see who was targeted at. Is Ragnaros falling? Tin surviving. Keep down at mid. Keep down in the top. A double keep objective push for Cosmos. They lose one hero, but well worth it when you have this huge XP lead and it even bigger structural oh, lead right now. now. want to look at our boss timer as that might be the next big objective to fight over a minute 20 seconds in the top as that siege camp was grabbed by cosmos in the bottom they only have 30 gems 
need a full 60 for their third turn in. They're going to drop off what they have for now and then get back to work. But look at these waves so pushed up. All the way on the blue side of the map, just this mid wave, the only one worth soaking right now. And they finally have Ragnaros back with them at full strength and level 16 talents. Just haven't seen the pick from Rhaegar yet. Been slow to decide, not quite sure what they want to do. Ultimately goes with the Rising Storm, which is essentially the lightning bond that we used to see. Power slide, they do find the Brightwing, so Fury Smash with the face melt, knocking Brightwing out of the way, a miscommunication between ETC and Ragnaros. Now a big blast by Kel'Thuzad, locking in a few targets, picking up the kill on Greymane. It's Varian split out, and will end up falling. Polymorph connecting onto Ragnaros, needs to be careful. It's actually Brightwing the one to fall, still looking for more. Just up against this Kel'Thuzad who's stuck in the force wall and 26 gems will hit the ground here. Four heroes alive, Molten Core coming out from Ragnaros. They want to close out this game number two and send us to the game number three. Ragnaros, uh, not necessarily strong at hitting the core from the Molten Core, but look at all this damage and that big swing onto Uther. Tin's in trouble, Uther's in trouble. Jurcher is gonna fall as Ciaris avoiding the blast. Kel'Thuzad goes down as well. See you later, Tin. It's four heroes and three catapults focusing on the core now. Moshpit comes out, stunning two more targets. They pick up another double kill, and GG's have been called. Game two so easy that time for Cosmos. They'll send us to a game number three, and NGS action for tonight will continue. Let's take a look at this match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series. Oh, buddy. Uh, what a finish there. A strong finish. Ultimately, uh, the Sulfurous Smash miss didn't end up costing them. A bit of a miscue by ETC and uh, Ragnaros right at the end there. But they ended up staying in the fight, finding the targets they needed, finding those kills they needed. And enough of them were down to push into the core well done by Cosmos, a dominant 17-2 victory on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Going to set us up for a game number three. I'm going to be taking an extremely short break. I'll be back in two minutes. Uh, and we're going to have a quick word from our NGS Overlord sponsors. Here's the talent screen before we move on. Almost forgot to show you guys that, but want to make sure you see it. And I will be back in about two minutes. Thanks for being here and hope to see you when I return.
welcome back. Game number three about to be underway. Looks like we're going to be heading into Volskaya Foundry chosen by Cosmos. So this time, for the first time tonight, Essence Gaming will be first to draft. Uh, how will that change it around? Hopefully it will help out Essence Gaming. Game two, they just got slaughtered. I hate to say it, but when it happens, it happens. 17 to 2, the kill count. And Cosmos definitely looking for blood. I'm going to let these captains know I'm finally ready to go. Uh, look at that 1 and 2 thirtieths sub goal. So strong. So good. Might need to up that sub goal to 100 soon. Imagine we had 100 subs on this channel. What? I can't even believe... I show on uh, Twitch here 95. Up here shows 96. It's somewhere around there. It's either 95 or 96. But if we hit 100... We might, we might just have to, like, never stop streaming. Game 3 draft underway, Volskaya Foundry. What a way to close it out, and finally the band being drawn out onto Ragnaros. That time, a little bit too much trouble, and I think they finally recognize it, that they want to go to the hero every single time they can. Ragnaros. Almost spelled that wrong in my book. As Phoenix is banned for the third time tonight, here's the ban on Stukov for the third time tonight. Will this be the Zul ban? It cost them in game number one. Might not be horrible on Volskaya Foundry. Lots of opportunity for Zul to find value soaking lanes. Uh, the Poison Nova Skeletal Mage at level 10 could be good depending on which way he goes. It's a strong hero. And I don't think they should ban anything else. They do ban out the Anduin. Will this be a Zul pickup? Game 2 wasn't the case. Uh, Zul was available. They went with the Brightwing and Varian. And now Varian 0-2 in this matchup. Uh, it's the Greymane who's 2-0 in this matchup. They pick up the Greymane for 10. Kel'Thuzad really never got going there in game number 2. So making the swap over to a, a more versatile hero with Greymane. Actually, I consider him the most versatile hero in the game. Uh, ranged form, organ form, able to do some camp clear, able to finish off kills and start off with the engage. There's the Sylvanas and ETC for E Day 15 and Ciaris. Sylv a menace in this meta with the black arrows. ETC has already proven to be effective. You just saw it in game number two for Cosmos, so they want to get back on the cow, but they leave Zul available, and there's the Kael'thas once again for Adrian. Greymane, Zul, and Kael'thas up against Sylvanas and ETC thus far. One ban remaining for each of our teams. This one's got to be a support or a tank. Probably a tank. And it is. It'll be the Garrosh taken out by Cosmos. I think that's their smartest pick. Does leave up the Murden that was played in Game 1 during their Game 1 victory. And this comp is almost identical so far. The Zul... The Greymane and the Kel'thas were all a part of that Game 1 win for Essence. Uh, it was the Murden and Anduin the final two picks, but Anduin already being banned out. They will remove the Brightwing, who's played in both of these games, also sitting with an 0-2 record tonight. Picks 3 and 4, Cosmos on the clock. I think they need their support right here right now they got to get their choice and don't want to leave their pick for the other side it's going to be uther and leeming for oddity and silver jackal alish the captain playing support all throughout this evening uh, might be forced onto something like a Rhaegar here. The Anduin's banned out. Game 2 played the Brightwing. Brightwing also banned out. Stukov's not here. Not Ana's still available. Okay, that's a hero. Gonna pair nicely with Kael'thas for the nano boost. And they're gonna run the dice here with the Varian. As I mentioned, yet to win a map in this matchup. But they're gonna go with Varian anyway and see if they can draw the first win with the hero. It's got me a little worried.
One pick left. Probably a solo laner. Maybe a second support. It's Dahaka! <laughs> yes! My favorite hero. Not necessarily my favorite map for him. Uh, so literally scratching my head for that. Not a lot of great uh, bushes to come in and, and surprise the other team. But they're going to pick up Dahaka nonetheless. Recently got a buff to his W. And I think it's enough to now clear out waves. It used to be so bad. Like he couldn't clear anything. Uh, Mrs. Windupbird, 69 bits being dropped and nominating Keladorn to cheer 69 more. Keladorn, you've been challenged. You've been challenged, my friend. Thank you for those bits, Mrs. Windupbird. One of my longest friends here on the channel. Always stopping into support and watching NGS action. Game three about to happen. Oh, I gotta ask you guys, who's gonna win this? Oh, snap. Uh, new poll. Who will win game three? Essence Gaming or Cosmos poll is open. Go ahead and vote. I'll keep an eye on that and let me introduce these teams. Game number three underway. Here in the back, it's Adrian on the Kael'thas Apocalypse. Going to be playing the Varian as Tins on the Grey Main. Jurger plays the Zul. And Ailish, the captain, picking up the Grandma Ana. Make some noise for Essence Gaming. And here on the right side in red, they just won game two in impressive fashion. Here's E Day 15 on the Sylvanas. Ciara's gonna play ETC. Uh, Naze on the Dahaka. Silver Jackal playing Li Ming. And Oddity on the Uther. Make some noise for those game two winners. They're known as Cosmos. And Keladorin is coming through. The 69 bits have been relinquished. Uh, appreciate those and thank you for. Uh, humoring Mrs. Windup Bird's request. So nice of you, so generous. We're underway here in game number three. At level one, the pickup for Sylvanas. Might of the Banshee Queen gonna try to get around with that uh, haunting wave build, but already Power Slide's gonna connect onto Grey Main. Tin in trouble now, stun, a lot of damage, and ends up becoming first blood for Cosmos, picking up exactly where they left off in game number two. Early portion of this map, we do see Nay playing the Dahaka up in the solo lane. So rotations coming out from the rest of Cosmos, heading down to the bottom. Uh, they're trying to keep Dahaka available to double soak some lanes, perhaps. Going for the enhanced agility at level one. Gonna give him some more speed in and around those bushes, which should make double soaking a possibility. Varian still just a big melee minion at this point in the match. Uh, no level four. Uh, heroic talent pick yet and as you guys know Varian not very strong until level 4 so already costing them a death perhaps having a, a weaker front line uh, it was Greymane the first to fall earlier but they're approaching level 4 doing a good job soaking they got the Zul able to do some double soaking just like we saw in game number 1 will Dahaka be able to keep up or not is really the question to ask now we're going to see Dahaka make the rotation to the bottom lane a little bit of XP essence is here for him. And we're not seeing much fighting. Teams in alternating lanes. Not really keeping up uh, neck and neck in the race at all. So they're not really walking past each other. And that's going to give opportunity for Greymain, Rule, Kael'thas, and the Ana. All four of them to combo on the siege camp quickly. And potentially make their move onto the support camp now. But we already see Uther starting it up along with ETC, Sylvanas, and Li Ming. Bringing it to 50% health. They're wide open. No one here from the other side even looking at it. First support camp taken away by Cosmos. And now able to slide onto the Zul. The face melt to knock him back. There's the skeletal prison. We'll slow it down and... Jurger is going to be able to get away. Well done by Zul avoiding the gank attack. Back in the bottom lane, Dahaka still trying to soak up. There were just four heroes here from Essence Gaming, but they've moved in and around control point A, waiting for it to spawn, waiting for their Zul to get back from base, just having to go back to grab some health, grab some mana. Here's another power slide from ETC as the sleep's going to land onto Dahaka. A long four second sleep. And Nay finally back up, but ETC is going to go down. No supporting available from Uther. Because Oddity was starting up the siege camp, and that's going to cost Cosmos a lot of channel time now here on Control Point A. 
Give me just a second. Getting a little, a little bit warm in here. Gonna take off my sweatshirt. Yo, go down to just the t-shirt now. Before I melt to death. Sorry for the stationary mouse. We're watching Control Point A and level 7 talents have been picked up for Essence Gaming Apocalypse, the one standing on the point as Varian. Let's see what's going on down here. Nay, able to escape away from Kael'thas and Greymane. Now moving on to the point, we do see Cosmos trying to play aggressive with their level 7 talents, looking to capture some channel time of their own. But over here, it will be another turret picked up for Essence Gaming, this one belonging to Ailish. And Tin holding on to that other one. I haven't seen the Biotic Emitter. Is Zul still holding that? Uh, no, actually, I'm completely wrong. It was Cosmos, uh, the ones to pick up that Biotic Emitter. Here comes the fight. A good taunt's gonna land on Haka as EGC now locked in by the Skeletal Prison. There goes that Biotic Emitter, but it's too little, too late. Second kill of the game for Essence Gaming. Looking for more now as E Day 15 falling below 50% health. Has the haunting wave around. Great drag from Haka, bringing Varian inside the tower range. That'll be the second kill of the game for Cosmos now, still looking for more themselves. Drag just barely missing on a low health Zul. This Dahaka looking pretty good so far for Nay, playing that Ragnaros in games one and two. Able to switch it up onto the Dinosaur in game three and maybe sending a bit of a curveball the way of Essence Gaming. Now it's full strength on the side of Cosmos. They're at 90% channel time and Varian just now getting back. Will not make it in time. The face melt from Ciaris. Enough to push Varian back. They don't get on the point in time. And here comes the Trinklaw Protector right in the face of Zul. Picking up the third kill of the game for Cosmos. Now looking for Varian. Apocalypse going to be able to walk back. But with this Protector here, their wall's in a lot of trouble. Power Glove going to come out to shut down the targeting. And is there another laser? No, not quite. Instead, just gonna make the move up to the top and start working on the, excuse me, start working on the well. Got a little hiccup there, too much water being supplied from Weenus, forcing me to have all those hydrants tonight. Appreciate you, Weenus. They don't quite get the well yet, but they're diving back in, finish off a tower. 18 seconds and 14% health remain. Five heroes in the top lane right now for Cosmos. They really want to get this down, but I don't see the Triglav moving in at all, even with the level talent advantage. Playing it a bit slow. Now going to get it with the laser, finally. Just one second and they will pop out. Level 10s now on both sides will be the Phoenix, the Cursed Bullet. Waiting to see what Ana and Zul want to do. There's the Nano Boost. Mid lane, Zul may be in trouble. Nay, maybe even in more trouble. But they're all fine. Valkymer in chat, welcome my dear friend. Saying I always enjoy Murda's excitement toward the game. Thank you for casting. Well, Valkymer, it is my pleasure to bring you this NGS match. Having a lot of fun this season doing as many as I can. I think this is number 16. If the math and the calculations are correct. But if I'm wrong, so be it. I'm not always right. Leaving the one to walk on the point and he's gonna pay with their life. No, saved by the Divine Shield of Uther. Still alive, it's 10 at 300 health. There's the Poison Nova helped secure the kill onto EPC. Oddity in trouble will end up falling as well as Li Ming desperately waiting for a reset. Not gonna find, oh, there's a reset. Does get one, but Varian with the shield wall. Still gonna survive as now the drag comes out onto Varian to hock in trouble, maybe pulling the wrong target in his direction. Barely making it out. It ends up being a two for one in favor of Essence Gaming. And appointed. we got another sub. This one gifted out to Valkymer from Keladorn. That's a quality gift sub, Keladorn. Appreciate that. Valkymer, welcome to the RG fam. Enjoy your emotes. And more importantly, enjoy the match this evening. It's been a thriller here in game number three now. Four to four on kills, tied up at 11 in XP. This one looking really, really close as the Biotic Emitter taken now for the first time in the game by Essence Gaming. It was quite the save in that last fight by Uther, saving the Leeming from falling. Uh, 
time, but too many targets fighting over uh, the point from Cosmos. They really just needed to bring their ETC to stand on the point. I don't know if they knew heroes were waiting to jump on them, but I mean, that was a great fight from Essence looking for the target they wanted. Uh, and it worked out. Varian's been pretty good thus far. Holding on that, holding on to the Biotic Emitter right now is Apocalypse. And also waiting to find a taunt target. Didn't quite want to use it on the Dahaka there. Look at what's going on in the bottom lane. Here's Jurger playing Zul, getting some value in Dahaka. Gonna have to brush stalk down here. Will be enough to clear out this wave. But you can already see Zul starting to apply some pressure in all the right spots. Speaking of right spots, look at ETC in this positioning. Waiting for someone to walk nearby. Not going to find the target. Ends up walking out into the lane to defend the Siege Firebats. Is that what they're called? Siege Firebats? I'm not sure. You guys might know. Tin going to move on the point. Control point B is active. And the early channel will once again belong to Essence Gaming, just like we saw during the first objective. But a lot of crafty rotations coming out, trying to catch anyone uh, out of position from Essence Gaming is Ciaris, but so far not finding that target. Here comes Zul, finds the Skeletal Prison onto Leeming, she's able to teleport back and out of the way of that flame strike. Now up here in the top, big silence connecting and Tin's in a lot of trouble. Mosh Pit does land on the multiple targets. Three heroes were there. They get the double kill now, looking for three. Apocalypse very low. 700 health ends up going down. The drag connecting, getting another kill. It's a quad kill for Cosmos. And Control Point B is active. They're going to be able to stand on it. And I don't think there's anything Essence Gaming's going to be able to do from here. Now we even have Sylvanas with the black arrows onto this fort. This will end up being our first structure of the game destroyed, and it will belong to Cosmos getting the job done here. Just waiting on their Trickla Protector number two to drop down from the sky. Well on their way now to a game three victory with a one level lead, a two objective lead if they can secure this, although they're only at 66%, only two thirds channeled. They're gonna need a little bit more help from here. And all the heroes have respawned now sitting at 80%. Ciaris can try to do the same thing he did during the first objective and bully these people back. But not going to be possible this time. Zul walks on and we will have an overtime situation as Ciaris is going to get the lead off skeletal prison throw at him. There's the cursed bullet, the knockback. And Greymane now going to be without his cooldown for 30 seconds. Here's the Phoenix thrown out by Adrian. Cosmos willing to play this a bit slower, waiting for those cooldowns to expire. Now going to re-engage. Just moments away from another wave of force. It's a silence connecting on the Varian. Still able to pop his protect anyway. They get the first kill of the fight. Now a drag landing. Along with that divine shield. Finally is the ETC going down, but a two for one. Might be more. No, it's a two for two as Greyman getting crafty. Li Ming with the perfect magic missiles. Oh my god, Silver Jackal looking like a beast in that moment. Might be able to find more as now that Kael'thas all alone. Adrian popping the shield, but will ultimately go down another quad kill. Can they get more onto this Ana? No, Ailish going to be able to walk away. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Ailish still here, still trying to live. There's the Calamity. No finish. Yes, it's a mega kill. All five heroes are down. Throw out those emotes in chat. Silver Jackal finding the gray main first right over here and then chasing down the Ana. Spectacular highlight reel for Leeming. We got Protector on the map, but not a lot of heroes here in support right now. It's the Haka and Uther inside the Protector. Here comes Leeming, the last of the heroes to make it here to the bottom lane. Actually, scratch that. Ana's still not here, so there is one hero missing. 
So no support, and Jerker's in trouble. Very low in Zul, pops the Poison Nova right before dying, and now a lot of resets for leaving a double kill with the Wailing Arrow from Sylvanas. It's another triple kill for Cosmos. Now trying to keep Kel'Thas here. There's the Power Glove, just barely not long enough to knock him into the wall. They will get this bottom lane fort and should be getting ready to work on the keep wall. 10 seconds left on this Trick Lot Protector, but that's enough time to get some damage onto these turrets. And maybe walk on past and shut down a little bit of this keep. Yes, they will. The Hawk is going to stand in here, take a bit of damage and a gravity lapse from Kael'thas. There's a power slide and the Mosh Pit from ETC, but taking shots from the keep. Ciaris is going to go down. They get the kill on Kael'thas, staggering out another death as Black Arrows have made it from Sylvanas. This keep under a lot of pressure. About to fall with the help of these minions, but look at all the help coming in. Now Greymane's going to leap in on these targets. Keep still sitting at 10% health. It's going to live. What a save. Essence Gaming coming at the last second, keeping the keep alive. Welcome in chat. This is Kovi has made it. The fantastic owner, operator, manager, coach, player, I don't know, caster. Everything for Phoenix Rising. This is Kobe. You're an outstanding individual. I appreciate what you do for NGS and what you do for this community. And welcome to the channel tonight. Hopefully you're having a good time. Hopefully you're able to stay for the conclusion of this game number three. Cosmos Gaming starting to turn on the lights or maybe turn off the lights here in game three. Looking incredible during that last push. Found a mega kill then found another squad kill after it. And now trying to find a support camp before they have level 20. A bit of a risk. But is it a calculated risk? We're about to find out. Big stun going to land onto a few targets. as ETC moves on the point. Bullies them off. Gets the Divine Shield. No Moshman for another 30 seconds. But Apocalypse about to fall on the Varian. He is down as the Living Bombs are trying to spread. Not quite able to finish off a kill. The Bionic Emitter was immediately thrown down. Does do enough supporting to keep these heroes here. And with two heroes down, the Varian and the Zul, they're ready to continue pushing in onto this mid lane fort. The Haka looking for a drag, not going to find it. As the Black Arrows come out again from Sylvanas, there's the power slide, does land onto Greyman, the knockback onto 10, follow up stuff from Uther. The Tin's going to be okay now, making the rotation down to the bottom lane. Cosmos need to get a keep down, and this one's already been started. They have a Leeming, so Silver Jackal just needs to be in range for like one orb. Maybe one magic missile with it. Yeah, that's enough. Keep down. Nano boost? Onto Kael'thas? What just happened? Ooh, yikes. That's a long cooldown. Uh, how many seconds? 70 seconds from Ana. Being wasted there. And Control Point C just 23 seconds away from being ready to go. And they're going to be without that nano boost. I wonder if Cosmos heard the heroic used or not. But it shouldn't really matter. They have their level 20s. They're up 19 to 7. A two-level lead right now. And let's take a look at the XP. Dahaka has been able to out-soak the Zul so far. A lot of credit to Nay. Oh, and they're going to find a wide-open kill on the Zul. Making the rotation through now. The power slide with the mosh pit from Ciaris. Not enough because the Divine Shield, I think, hit the wrong target that time. Trying to keep the ETC up. Ends up falling. Now on the backside, Leeming's in trouble, trying to teleport away. Wave of Force gonna save her. Now Nay in trouble, should have a drag any second. There's the Tunneling Claws coming out, and Leeming stepping into the barrier, and they do find the kill. It's another quad kill for Cosmos, with the bottom keep already destroyed. They're gonna try to find more, and it's gonna be the top lane. Siege Camp approaching, approaching big wave as well. Luther gonna climb on in. There's Sylvanas locking down another structure. With the help of Leeming, they should be able to get this down. Greyman gonna try to save the day, but won't be able to. Second keep of the game down. Now Dahaka pushing in this bottom lane wave. Catapults approaching the core, but Hero's about to respawn. Bottom lane's an issue. Zul's in trouble. And this top lane becoming an issue too now as the catapult is locking onto the core. Here come those power gloves and a poison Nova to slow it down to Haka. It's the solo kill on Greymane. Sorry, folks. I missed it. 
some mega kill emotes Ooh, coming out as cool. Cosmos He's are trying to disengage. They have all six of their structures still standing and 24 kills on the scoreboard. Nothing is slowing them down yet. Let's look at the kills. Eight apiece for Sylvanas and Leeming. These assassins are on point now trying to steal away another turret. And finally with level 20 talents, maybe, just maybe, Essence Gaming will be able to find a fight to bring them back into this game. Dahaka, the only hero standing on control point C. They know exactly where these heroes are. They're all clearing out this bottom lane. One catapult can remain standing with the minion wave enough to finish it off. Here they come to see, and Nay knows it. Gonna try to run away quickly, and there they go. Zul gonna lock them in. Not even using the tunneling claws that time. Sleep coming out as well from Ailish, not gonna connect. Now top lane becoming an issue, because look at this push starting up by Cosmos. They have catapult with them. No mercs. But they are going to start putting the pressure on the core, which will require someone from Cosmos, excuse me, someone from Essence Gaming to stay back and defend this. Looks like it might be the Grey Mane as the Wave of Force connects. There's the Power Slide. Stunned in again by Uther and cannot escape. A dominant play. They do lose their Dahaka on the bottom side as the hearts are starting to come out. Are they too late? Poor shielding getting low, but still standing for now. Finally, it's expired. There goes the shield coming out from uh, uh, EPC, the Storm Shield. Standing in the Bionic Emitter now, getting the D shield. Doesn't go for the Moshman, but still on a three second cooldown. It's going to be E Day 15 falling first, but the core at 45% health. There's the Moshman. Power Glove going to push him out. Uther falls as well. Might be more as EPC and Silver uh, and Leeming played by Silver Jackal. They're low, they have to run. There's the redemption from Uther bringing him back to life. 55% was whittled all off the core, just standing at 45 now. Shielding has started to respawn as they make their move back down to control point C. They should get some channel time started. And should be able to get Dahaka back into this fight immediately with the Brush Stalker. There's Li Ming trying to harass. Just 10% needed. And no one's going to make it here in time. Cosmos going to get their hands on another Triglop Protector. I think, yeah, all three now have gone over to them. And with the bottom lane and top lane keeps already down, they can try to close it out Blue here. The Hawk has been able to rejoin them. Will they want to hop inside the Protector? No one's hopping out yet. Need to wait for Sylvanas to get here, and here she comes. Just now entering the picture is E-Day 15. And the Protector are going to start making the rotation towards mid. Not finding any targets, just wasting a lot of time thus far. All they need to do is get onto the core with this Protector, and it's not enough uh, damage built in that they can do 45% with ease. The Hawk is taking a lot of damage, no Essence. The Haka might fall here, trying to tunnel and claws out, but the poisoning has been applied. Nay is very low, needs some sort of supporting, gets the Storm Shield from EPC. That should do it. But look at the core, here goes the Protector moving on. 51 seconds still remaining as they lose two heroes. It's ETC and Dahaka both falling. 40% on the core, 20%. Look how heavy these punches are from the Protector. Can they close it out? Just 5%, 1%. Yes, they can. Cosmos with the reverse sweep complete over Essence Gaming here in week number three of NGS. Not the finish I was expecting. Uh, Cosmos starting to slide there at the end, losing a few fights, but they got the protector, they got the damage on the core ultimately end up with the reverse sweep and a slew of kills in games two and three uh this one with 25 total kills for them a strong team effort and a strong team win they're going to be very happy to leave tonight with uh our game three mvp has got to be silver jackal look at the stats eight kills in the game no deaths led the team in siege damage and hero damage well executed by silver jackal Let's take a look at that talent build where we see uh, orbs at 4 and orbs at 16. But of course, Illusionist? 
At 13, with the Calamity? Okay. All right. I think the Wave of Force got the most value for leaving in that game. Uh, helped keep a few targets from escaping. Really well done by Silver Jackal. Want to make sure they get all the credit they deserve. Now, let me try to reach out to our captain. <clears throat> uh, maybe get an interview going. I'm going to hop in a lobby here on the NGS server. Send a ping out to Odd Thought. Do -do -do -do. Interview, NGS, lobby one. And hopefully Odd Thought will be able to join us here. What did you guys at home think of that match? If you have any questions uh, for Cosmos, let me know in chat. I'll try to relay, relay those on for you. Sorry, words are getting really hard. I've been casting. This This one's been up for, oh god, how long? Does it tell me here? It tells me here. We're at the four hour mark right now. It's been a long night, but welcome yeah. to the stream. <laughs> Silver Jackal and E Day 15 joining us, both the assistant captains for Cosmos. How is the team feeling after that big win? Hey, man, we're just glad we could finish that set as quickly as possible for you and get you in bed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Approaching midnight here on the East Coast, I definitely appreciate it. First things <laughs> first, who are we to blame about the banning mishap in game number one? Me. 100% my fault. Well, Silver Jackal, you certainly made up for it in game number three. We'll let you off the hook. How about that? Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's rewind all the way back to game number one. Talk about Sky Temple, maybe a map that you guys weren't ready to play on. A uh, bit of a nifty pickup during the map ban phase mm -hmm. before the match started. Were you guys caught off guard by Sky Temple at all? A little bit, to be honest. And, you know, we haven't played that map very often. Not people, you know, people don't choose it very often. And that didn't help all the technical issues, just, yeah, it was quite the party. Uh, so tonight, a lot of focus on the Varian. You guys went for it in game number one, but you guys let it slide through to them in games two and three, and ultimately Varian goes 0 for 3 tonight. How do you feel the hero played, and was it just not enough for this particular matchup, or do you think maybe he could have gotten a win anyway? Take it away, the, there are probably chances for both teams to find a win with it tonight. Um, I think the way those games played out, it was just tough for him. I mean, everybody knows what the spikes are, so they play around it, right? Aggressive early against them, you know, give a little bit mid game, and then toward the end, you just kind of walk past him or kill him. <laughs> um, and I think both teams pretty much just did that. <laughs> in all three games um, so the other thing about game number one you're having to deal with the zool doing a lot of double soaking of course you guys brought in the ragnaros trying to do the same uh but no lava wave instead we saw the sulfurous smash tonight twice from nay uh wondering if perhaps there was a bit of second guessing after seeing how well the zool was able to soak maybe having that bit of extra wave clear from the ragnaros may have helped what are your opinions there I mean, I'm a huge fan of Lava Wave, but I'm not sure how Nay feels about it. I think he prefers Sulfur Smash, and that's why he went the instead of the Lava Wave. Especially after the rework, they reduced the cooldown. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I suppose you guys did have the Varian Taunt, so an, an extra layer of CC to add into it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just curious, because, I, I mean, Zul was good, and you ended up seeing the Zul again in game number three. But that time, you guys bring out the Dahaka, and I think Dahaka was the perfect pick, because... He didn't really have reason to die, and he hit a lot of drag. So I want to credit Nay, but anything you want to say about your solo lane player and uh, how their performance was tonight? He plays yeah. really well when he's not lagging. <laughs> yeah, first game he had <laughs> headset issues and then was basically playing on a slideshow at the end, which obviously wasn't the reason we lose the game. Essence played a really good game one and deserved the win, but um, you know some, some of his late game... Uh, Bumbles and game one were <laughs> definitely because he was having some issues, but overall, Nay played really well. He always plays solid. Like we were saying, you know, the, the game one, the Varian setup looks good for the smash, and then game three said, look, the Haka looks good here. We trust him on his picks, and it turned out to be a really strong pick. He's good with the hero, and it did a good job of neutralizing the Zul a bit. 
Well, uh, I mean, a lot of credit's got to go out to you guys playing the assassin roles tonight. Uh, we did get to see the Rainer in game one from uh, UE Day. I thought that one was pretty good. I liked how you guys had uh, both the... Um... Oh, no, excuse me. That was them, the Varian and Rainer in game two with both the army skins. Did you guys notice that? I was getting confused for a bit even. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was... didn't notice that. It was well done. It's a little bit of misdirection. I, I think they handled that well. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we didn't have quite the synergy in game one. That's on us. We got to up our game. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, I mean, game two, you guys were lights out. I think it was 17 to 2, the final kill count. You guys were able to grab that boss, like pretty much all the web weavers you wanted. And from start to finish, uh, end to end, you guys were on fire. And you guys were able to parlay that right into game three. Got off with that early first blood and really kept the momentum going. Do you feel as though game two gave you guys the edge you needed, the confidence you needed for game number three and that uh, victory at the end of the day? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the team as a whole, we don't get down over a loss, whether we're playing NGS or just SL or something, scrims, anything. I don't think anybody on the team necessarily gets down and doesn't think we're going to win the next game. So it's we're pretty fortunate to have those mentalities on the team. So going into game two, we just said, look, we were a little tentative in a couple places in game one. Let's just get a little more aggressive here game two. And we started out that way and basically just rolled it all the way through game two that way. And then, like you're saying, we got a couple of early kills in game three, which I think kind of put them on the back foot and just allowed us to keep building the momentum and build the lead. So I do have a chat for each of you uh, coming from Valkamer in our chat. Uh, a question for each of you, I should say. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long night. Uh, for, first one uh, for E-Day. What is your most desired skin addition for any hero? Skin addition for any hero? I I would say I, I can't even call one out. I have, you know, to my great shame, never been a... New follower detected. Person. Oh. So I don't really have like, you know, oh, I, the only Blizzard game I played before this was uh, was the Diablo series. So I'm not a WoW guy. I wasn't a StarCraft guy, you know, all that stuff. So um, like we're going to have to fire you day from the team now. Yeah, the, the only <laughs> thing I would say is, you know, I understand that it's tough on the dev team, but, you know, Ragnaros could probably use a different color skin at some point in his life. I it's think so. One. I, yeah, I heard the chocolate fountain Ragnaros. That's the one. I don't oh, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the fondue rag. Exactly. Like a chocolate and a cheese one. I think that nice. would work for me. Uh, I want to <laughs> say quick thank you for the two follows coming out from Adrian Raposas and TX8675. So our second question from Valkamer, this one for Silver Jackal. What hero do you feel would have the best Broadway song? Oof, that's a tough one. Um. Hmm. Best Broadway song. Probably Brightwing in the Deathwing skin. <laughs> you know who my vote's for? It's Orphea because she reminds me of Orphan Annie. And tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, I'll love you tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> thanks for being good like, sports on this, guys. I, I feel like Lee Ming might have some pipes. Like yeah, the leaving announcer, you know, like yeah. she could get after it. I think. No, let's go Cho'Gal. Yeah, you know, <laughs> two man Get, get a go. harmony. <laughs> yeah, some harmonies. Nice. Well, thank you so much for being participants in this thrilling uh, three-game set tonight, and uh, thanks for being good sports during this interview. Of course, before I let you guys go, I got to give opportunity for some shout-outs. I don't know who wants to go first, but I'll let both of you say something. The floor is yours. Take it away, you day. I'll let you go first. Yeah, just as always, shout outs to the team. You know, we uh good good turnaround tonight after losing the first one. Everybody's been playing solid, so we'll hopefully we keep the momentum up. Thanks to Murda for the cast tonight, even through all the brutal technical issues <laughs> on the second set. A quick um, one. Yeah, and thanks to all NGS staff and people who keep everything running, as always, much appreciated. It's a lot of work. It doesn't really get uh the attention it deserves a lot of times so thanks everyone you, you don't have to thank me twice i already heard it the first time <laughs> <laughs> my shout out's pretty much the same uh, also shout out to i believe their name team name is essence gaming yeah i'm terrible with names so yeah shout out to them great set uh for sure shout out to you again thanks for casting really appreciate it 
shout out to NGS for setting this whole thing up. It's been a lot of a lot of fun. Been playing a couple years now with them. And shout out to our team for keeping it together and getting that victory. Well, thanks for sharing the love. Thanks for being a longtime members here in NGS. Best of luck in the season nine. You guys are looking pretty good so far. Earning those two points tonight. Uh, I think moves you guys up to around sixth place, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe even higher. Maybe you go all the way up to tied for third. It's a tight nice. division. So uh, keep up the good work, and I'm looking forward to seeing more soon. All right, appreciate Sounds it. Good. Thanks so much. Have a great night. Get some rest. All right, you too. Thanks. Yeah. All right, chat. Wow. What a set tonight. We got all three out of Essence Gaming and Cosmos. Uh, went to the wire, but ultimately it's Cosmos walking away with the reverse sweep over Essence Gaming. They're going to put two points in the points column and uh, take a bit of a lead in the standings over Essence. I want to say thank you to absolutely every single person who is here. I might read out every single name, but we might be here all night. So if you've been here and you've been supporting throughout this evening, uh, pat yourself on the back. Say a quick thank you to yourself before you go to sleep. Um, quick superlatives need to go out to a few of you, though. And I, I don't want to miss this, so hold on. Uh, starting off, Keladorn, absolute blessing to have you around tonight. Uh, gifting out some subs as well as Moist Weenus and Dax Hole. You guys really are making uh, Little Streamer Boy's dream come true. Appreciate that. A lot of bits coming from Miss Windup Bird. Uh, a ton of follows. Looks and like it's a, time for a shout out. A last minute shout out request uh, for Keladorn for donating subs and still honoring my bit donation call out. Stand up guy. I got to agree. Well done, Keladorn. Thank you so much for those. A uh, total of ridiculous amounts of subs tonight. I don't know why you guys keep blessing me. All I can say is thank you. Um, please consider continuing to support me through this. Uh, without a job, it's hard to make money. But Twitch has been an outstanding outlet for me just to you know, express some enthusiasm I have stored inside and really put my efforts towards something great. So if you guys are enjoying it, I got to say I'm enjoying you guys. It's been a lot of fun for me. I hope to see you back tomorrow night. We have another doubleheader kicking off at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the participants will be Zombie Step and Prime Apes kicking off at 8.30. That's Division C East. And then later on at 10.30, we got Division D West. It's Choo Choo Boys and Team Rainbow Strike Go Part 2. I was able to cast them last week. I'm really excited to see how this second half goes for them. Hope to see you guys here tomorrow night. Thank you to everyone. You don't need to thank me, Valkymer. Thank you. Uh, and without further ado, that'll do it. See you later, Green Mist. You've been great. If you want to find me, I'm over on Twitter, at MurderRG. You can probably best reach me over on Discord. Find me on the NGS uh, up at the top in the board listing. Uh, just say hi. Drop a nice line. Brighten my day. I love hearing from you guys. It really does mean a lot when you reach out. But I hope to see you back tomorrow night. And until then, I'm Murda. They're the Green Mist. And I'll see you in the Nexus. Bye-bye.